Hello there. My name is Jacqueline Hanna, and I am the Assistant Director at Food Co-op Initiative. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, all about up and coming Food Co-op Conference. So we are going to talk today all about what is the up and coming Food Co-op Conference and what you can specifically expect from it this year in 2017. Just a little bit about FCI before we get started. We are a small nonprofit that serves food co op startup food co-ops all over the nation. We've helped open 130 food co-ops so far over a decade and currently are providing support to over 120 communities across the country from Sitka, Alaska to Boston, Massachusetts that are working on opening their own food co-ops in their communities. We exist to support you guys. This is what we're here to do at all stages of development, whether you're having your first conversation with a neighbor or two about the possibility of a food co-op, or you're opening your doors in a couple of short months, we can be of help. Give us a call anytime. Our phone number and our email are there on screen. Take a minute to sign up for our email list and make sure you're getting all of our newsletters and mailings. Thank you to our sponsors the USDA, National Cooperative Bank, National Cooperative Grocers, and the Blooming Prairie Foundation, and as well as dozens of mature food co-ops all over the nation and individuals who donate to make sure that our mission moves forward, making this webinar and support of startup food co-ops all over the nation possible. A few quick points of housekeeping. This is a live webinar today. We are recording this and it will be available shortly both on our website, fci.coop.coop, as well as our YouTube channel. If you learn a lot today, please share this webinar with other board members and supporters of your co-op. We want your questions. Today's webinar will be more dynamic and more useful to everyone if you send in your questions. So if you have questions during the presentation, send them to info at fci.coop. You'll see it there on the screen. Info at fci.coop. We will answer those questions with our guest presenter at the end of the presentation. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is all about the up and coming food co-op conference. Your presenters today are myself, Jacqueline Hanna from Food Co-op Initiative, and our guest uh, is Deb Troca, the Executive Director of the Indiana Cooperative Development Center. She's also the co-founder of the Up and Coming Food Co-op Conference that is now going into, I believe it's seventh year. We'll double check with Deb in just a minute. So, First off, I want to welcome Deb and thank her so much for making time to be here today. Hi, Jacqueline. Great to be here. Thanks for asking. Absolutely. We know this is the really busy time. We're only, what, seven weeks, eight weeks from the conference? Yeah, a little over seven weeks. Things will start getting very hectic. <laughs> Just over seven weeks. So you co-founded um, the conference. And it started in 2010, so this is the seventh year. Correct. George Huntington from Blooming Foods and I put our heads together and came up with this idea for a little regional co-op conference that has since become a national conference. Um, it's gotten bigger and better every year, and we're very excited to uh, be putting on this uh, seventh up-and-coming conference. Excellent. And it seems like I know there's been hundreds so far um, of startups and individuals that have attended. What are you guys expecting this year? This is a, a big year for, uh, for you. You've, we've moved locations uh, from the original in Bloomington to Milwaukee. Uh, what should we expect this year for turnout? Well, our goal is 225 people. That's a little bit more than uh, what we had last year, which was 200. Um, so we're really hoping that with a great uh, lineup of speakers and workshops and a brand new location and a wonderful food co-op host and outpost that we'll see um, increased attendance and excitement about the conference this year. Excellent. And for those of you who don't know, Outpost Natural Foods is the food co-op, is a food co-op, there are actually two, um, in Milwaukee. Uh, they are our host this year. They have four stores. And it's just, it's an amazing co-op. It's a, a leader nationally. So we're very, very lucky to have them as our, as our host this year.
Next slide. Okay. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about what people should expect. Um, a lot of people watching maybe have been to Up and Coming before because um, I know we get a lot of repeat attendance because people have such a great time and learn so much. But if you're new to Up and Coming, what are the main goals? What should they expect to get out of the conference experience? Well, first and foremost, lots and lots of workshops. Um, you'll see in a later slide that we've got over 50 workshops scheduled over the two days. Um, so anything you can imagine from if you're a brand new first time you've been meeting all the way up to you're already open. Um, so workshops is, is the first thing on the list. Um, and the opportunity to spend time with other folks who are doing what you're doing. So peer-to-peer -peer networking. Lots of opportunities for that. Um, we've got some receptions in the evening for a couple of nights. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, as well as throughout the day. So take the opportunity while you're there in Milwaukee to meet uh, lots of new people, get phone numbers, emails, people that, um, you know, ways that you can communicate with each other after you've gotten home. Um, third on that list would be access to experts. So there will be a lot of people mm -hmm. there who um, work with startup food co-ops every day. So a lot of CDS consultants will be there. We'll have other um, food co-op folks from other food co-ops that are already up and operating who will be there to lend their expertise. And then we'll also have um, some expertise from from your own peers. So there's some opportunities for peer-to-peer -peer learning. And last but not least, fun. Um, this is a, a really fun and exciting event. So I want you to take the opportunity to learn a lot of stuff, meet a lot of people, but also have fun in the process. I love that's an important part of the conference to you. Um, I started attending, I think it's second, maybe it's third year. Um, and one of the things that was so marketed about the conference that Deb runs is that she understands that you're very isolated in your work as startups and your individual communities with lots of people who don't yet understand what your co-op is. And that a big part of it is not only getting educated, but also getting nourished uh, to take that energy back. And it's one of the things I hear remarkably re-energized for the work that they really didn't know how tired they were getting and now they really feel like they can go back and, and you know we can get ready to do a lot of work so um with the meat of the conference as you said is the workshops um and and the workshops there's more of them every year so there was four tracks two years ago of workshops last year there were five tracks of workshops this year there's six. Can you um can you talk to us about why you've expanded that and how they've expanded? Sure. Um, sure. We've added a track. Well, let me back up. Um, in the past, we've had some case studies, um, but but we have learned from feedback from the people who have been to the conference that they really wanted to hear more from their peers. So we added an entire track of just case studies. So those are opportunities to learn from other co-ops um, who are in operation, what they learned along the way, hopefully some lessons that you can learn that perhaps um, things that you don't want to repeat. Uh, so really some lessons learned. And then also as a result of feedback from our attendees from the past years, we've added a new track called Innovation. And the innovation- Talk to you about innovation. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm just really curious about that. What does that encompass? Well, we, we have heard a lot of feedback from groups who are organizing in urban communities that are facing a lot of challenges, whether they're in a food desert, whether they are in communities that are economically challenged. So we, you spoke, we listened, and we put a track together that specifically addresses the issues that you're going to face um, organizing in those communities. Excellent, excellent. And again, this is something um, that I just got to give a quick testimony to, <laughs> uh, not being Deb, is that this conference is so responsive to where the startup community is, its needs. Um, Deb really takes that feedback every year and shapes the next conference based off it. So really no two conferences year to year are ever the same because she's really responding to what the startup community says they need. Um, and, and so we've got some new things going on this year. The tracks used to be aligned with the uh, three stages of co-op or startup co-op development. That's the 
four and three stages model that hopefully you know about. If not, FCI has a webinar. Go check it out, the four and three stages with Bill Gessner. It is the backbone of how we develop co-ops. But this year, um, a little bit to reflect what we heard back from startups about how they actually get the work done and assign people to the tasks. And I thought that was really interesting. Did you want to say anything about that? Sure. One of the, the one of the things that we heard from participants was we've got all these great workshops, but we really don't know what applies to us or what pertains to us. So we tried to for you and tell you which stage of development would um, be most beneficial coming to that particular workshop. Um, and Joel, if you if you can advance the slide going the other direction. Um, there we go. And so we also organize the tracks kind of according to the stage of development that you're in. So that board and organizing, all the workshops in this track are geared towards that kind of that organizing phase um, when you're trying to pull your board together, really trying to make that board gel and move the, um, the organizing effort forward. Okay. So in this one, what I really loved is actually a lot of them are, are, organ are aimed at that early stage of board organizing, but it's actually about your responsibilities as a board member throughout the stages of development. So there's lay the laying the foundation, which is great, uh, was offered every year by Bill Gessner, um, about really how the development process works. But there's also more advanced stage concepts in here, like hiring your GM moved into this category because that's a board responsibility. Um, how to be a great employer, as in if you're going to already have, if you already have an employee pre-open, uh, like an outreach coordinator or a project manager, ha that actually takes a lot more um, thought and specialization of, of skills than most startups think. Um, but these are board responsibilities. Accounting and taxes, always your responsibility until the GM shows up. Uh, you're setting the vision. And so what I love is if you're a board, if you go to the, anything in this track, you've got your board hat on. You kind of know which hat you're wearing because there are so many of so many different hats uh, when organizing a startup. Um, is there anything in this track that you're that's new or that you want to really make sure people are aware of? Um, there is a new workshop that Ben Sandel is doing, uh, Policy Governance 101. Um, that's um, something that a lot of the food co-ops uh, are using uh, with their boards, and there's a lot of confusion about what does that mean, how does it work. Um, so Ben's put a workshop together to explain it. So it's exactly what it says, Policy Governance 101. Um, how do you, what is it? How do you use it? How do you make it work? How do you use it successfully? Great. All right, well, let's take a look at our next track. Business development. Now, I just want to point out that um, what this part is, is your responsibility as a developing co-op and, and a board of a developing co-op to build the business. So everything from how are we going to raise the money, locate the site, negotiate the lease, uh, plan the store design, the actual building of the store as a project. So this isn't your board hat. This is kind of board as project manager hat. And uh, there's some new things going on here this year as well. Uh, anything you want to point out, Deb? Creative funding sources is a new workshop. Um, Brenda Fennell from um, Shared Capital Cooperative will be um, facilitating and presenting that workshop, trying to look at, okay, so we know about bank loans, we know about member loans. So what are some of the other more creative funding sources that she has seen working with startups? Um, so I think if you are in that phase where you're starting to look at your pro formas and going, oh my goodness, how in the world are we going to raise all that money? Perhaps this is a workshop that you want to attend to look at some of those creative sources that Brenda has seen working with uh, startup co-ops. I love that that's on here. We're seeing more and more startups that there just is a gap between the money you can raise um, from your owners and from banks and having to find those grants and or find those unique funding sources uh, to make that pro forma work. So, so glad to see this. And I'm going to put in a really quick plug. Uh, there is a new one called How to Work with Lenders that I'm leading. And this is uh, specifically about the relationship of your project with lenders from beginning to end. I find a lot of startups 
don't know how to start that relationship with lenders or start it much too late in the process. They don't realize we're building a relationship, not showing them just a finalized pro forma three months before we need to draw money. Uh, that's not the way to success. So we'll talk about how you actually build your relationship with lenders so you get that yes when you have a great pro forma and location. All right, let's take a look at our next track. This one's brand new this year, and my understanding is this is a response to a lot of uh, clamoring and demand from the startups. Is that right, Deb? Absolutely. Um, there's a couple in here that I want to just touch on really quickly. Um, we've talked about and had workshops before on volunteers, but this is a new workshop, Volunteers, the Agony and the Ecstasy. Um, we all know that in those early stages, we need lots and lots and lots of volunteers um, to help move the project forward. So Katie's going to help walk you through the good, the bad, and the ugly of working with volunteers and how she successfully done that in the project that she was part of. Um, there are um, a number of other new ones, many in micro ownership loan campaigns with Jerry Nash. I'm looking at um, some of the ownership campaigns that he's worked on, some that are large, some small. You know, not everybody needs a huge ownership loan campaign. So how do you create a mini campaign, if you will, or a micro campaign? Um, Jacqueline, there's a couple of other new ones on there uh, that you might want to touch on as well. Yeah, um, what I love about this track is that if you love hearing from your co-op peers about what has worked and their organizing experiences, this track is really just full of it. Um, you'll notice that um, Jerry is from Prairie Food Co-op. He is actively the outreach coordinator um, for that co-op that's in stage B, 2B development. Katie Novak, uh, Green Tap Grocery, that her project will open this spring. Um, and she is well known throughout the community. Darnell Adams is the project manager at Dorchester Food Co-op. Melanie Shelato um, is on here as a, pro a professional graphic designer, uh, but her background is that she was the board president at Green Top for numerous years. Brenda Hines, um, again, actually um, a fabulous professional uh, communicator and project manager herself, um, but she's with Oshkosh Food Co-op, which is in stage 2A development. So lots and lots of peer uh, opportunities to learn directly from folks, which I think is particularly exciting. Um, Brenda's going to cover something phenomenal that Oshkosh has done that I want to give, I, I just want to make sure people show up to this one because she has created an event that they have run two years in a row. And each year they had individually gotten over 40 owners in one night. You do not want to miss that. Awesome. <laughs> All right. And so next up, we have our open and operations track. So who is this track really aimed at, Deb? Um, this track is aimed at, particularly if you are an already open co-op, but also if you are in stage three and you are close to opening the doors, um, that's a whole nother ball game. Um, that organizing piece, by the time you get to this stage, that's old hat, but actually, getting the building up and opening the doors, that's a that's a whole new dynamic. So we've put um, some workshops together to help prepare you for that. Some of these will look familiar to you, some um, are new. Um, controlling labor costs is one of those and we are very excited to have Amy Fields with us. Um, you may remember that Amy was with us before in a capacity as GM. Um, help me, which food co-op? Eastside. It was that Eastside Food Co-op opened as a startup about eight years ago, and Amy led that process and was their GM for eight years. And she's now with NCG, so she's got lots of experience in controlling labor costs, and that's one of the biggest costs that you're going to have as a food co-op and one that you have a lot of control over. So that's a workshop that you do not want to miss. And so I really want to point out what's awesome is we've got a lot of small, independent, uh, smaller co-ops up in the Wisconsin region, uh, Minneapolis region, Minnesota region. And this is a great track, even if you haven't, if your co-op was started in the 70s or 80s, 
Um, this is how, you know, really operational issues that you can send your staff to take a look at. And if you're a startup food co-op and have hired your GM, this track is really for your GM. Uh, this is, in a lot of ways, this is for the people who are going to be running the store. But don't be afraid to take them um, as board members to understand what your GM will be doing and the issues they'll be up against. And I want to make a quick shout out for the P6 program. You may or may not heard of it, um, but it's an amazing way to differentiate. As you know, we're going into tougher and tougher competition out there. Um, and how do we differentiate what our co-op does from things like Fresh Time? And the P6 program is about helping with that. And I don't want to go too far into it, but it's it's a rating program uh, for products to really help customers understand what is truly local and cooperative and, and what products most enrich their community and give back. Um, so it's really something worth checking out. And we want to give a thank you to Willie Street Food Co-op, um, who is over in Madison, who is sending over uh, several members of their staff to give some of these presentations on how to run your store. All right, so let's dive into innovation. And I'm going to let you take away what should we, what can we expect from this? And almost everything in this track is new. When you see those stars, by the way, I keep forgetting to mention, next to the name of a workshop, if you see those three stars, this is something brand new. So if you've been attending for two, three years, uh, but up and coming, these are the ones that you have definitely never seen before. Um, so what are some things you'd like to highlight here? Uh, I don't even know where to start. They're all, um, <laughs> they're all great. Um, but basically, what this track really is designed to do is to provide a forum for those attendees who are urban organizers who are, once again, they're either in maybe in food deserts or they're in economically challenged communities. And how does that organizing look different? How does it look different, say, from the standpoint of um, the culture of the co-op itself? You know how you staff your co-op. How does the how does the feel of the co-op? How is it is it different from a, from other co-ops, other food co-ops? Um, also, looking at funding the unconventional co-op. How does trying to find the money to open your co-op? How does it look different? How is it the same? Um, so trying to look at some unconventional sources for co-ops that perhaps are organized just a bit differently. Um, you don't want to miss Malik Akini if you um, didn't get to see him last year. Um, he's back for an encore presentation. Um, he did a beautiful job of talking about how we foster racial justice within the food co-op system. Um, so that's a workshop you don't want to miss. Once again, um, we've got a session on conventional food distribution. Um, New Waters is a um, co-op in Texas and um, a little bit different twist. And I don't want to give anything away, so I'm not going to tell you any more about it. You can go look it up if you like. Um, but Carmen uh, was with us a couple of years ago and is doing uh, wonderful things out in Texas. And we've asked her to come talk about um, her co-op and the, the things that they're doing there. Um, Jacqueline, anything I've missed? No, I think um, one of the exciting additions this year is Jade Barker from CDSCC is joining us. Uh, she actually helped found the River Valley Food Co-op as their board president, uh, which opened as a successful startup, I think about eight, nine years ago now, a wildly successful startup food co-op, arguably one of the most, the most successful in the nation in the last 10 years. Um, Jade was behind that project, and now she works with CDSCC as a board consultant and facilitator, and is specifically really digging in these last few years to the issue of racial diversity in food co-ops, and I don't think you're going to want to miss it. She has one that is really specifically uh, thriving in, in a white co-op world, is specifically for non-white uh, food co-op organizers, a space um, just for non-white food co-op organizers, and then she's also offering Achieving Racial Diversity in Food Co-ops, uh, to invite the full community to have a conversation about the challenges and solutions um, to the issue of lack of diversity in our food co-ops. I think that's something new to not be missed. I'm excited Jade's joining us. It's going to be an exciting okay. track. Yeah, it really is. Let's take a look at um, the, speaking of exciting, let's take a look at case studies. I cannot believe how many, I, I hadn't looked at the full list <laughs> of how many case studies uh, we're going to have, um, and, I, and this is a reaction to 
year after year here having case studies be really top rated. Is that right? Right by, by attendees? Oh, absolutely. It's, this is one of the most highly rated um, types of workshops that we have. You, the people who come to the conference, the attendees really want to hear what their peers are doing. And we heard you loud and clear. And as you can see, we have quite a list. We do. And it's such a, it is an exciting diversity of opportunities. First off, I just want anyone attending this who's organizing a food club. remember that um, but there's great diversity here this year friendly city opened I think a good seven years ago now and has been a runaway success and their general manager is joining us he was their opening manager um, to talk about why he thinks they've been such a success what they did right um, and the few and the couple things that he would have done differently to be even more successful so that's going to be great we've got a you know a start food co-op that's really rich to maturity but we have a whole lot of new ones Clifton Market's actually opening next week, which is just so exciting. Um, it's a large store. It's over 20,000 square feet. Um, it's going to be 50% conventional in Cincinnati. Real, it's going to be a story not to be missed. Seward um, is actually an existing food co-op from the 70s, but they opened what they call their friendship store, and it took years of organizing. They went into a neighborhood that was uh, is predominantly black historically and said, would you like a food co-op here? And it was a three-year conversation about building what that community would want in a food co-op, how they would want their store to be different, um, and opening that store um, to great accolades um, from the community with over 60% of the staff being actually living in the community. Uh, so great story about working with your community to represent your community. Uh, East Aurora Food Co-op just opened last year. Um, mid-year and is hitting all their targets, doing great. Sugar Beet Co-op um, from Oak Park, Illinois, uh, doing well. Going to tell a little bit of a story, though, about um, not quite hitting their marks and what they're doing to correct and, and what they would have done differently, an opportunity to learn from um, some things that didn't go right and the things that did. Uh, Green Top Grocery being built right now should open late this spring, and then Bisman Food Co-op. A very different community. Uh, this is uh, Bisman is from uh, Bismarck Menandin, um, North Dakota, and uh, their organizing was just phenomenal. Um, they really got they've got they've got a really dynamic story. They almost lost the project and then opened to wild success. And then Renaissance. I <laughs> um, I'll let you speak to that, Deb. <laughs> well, Renaissance was with us last year. Um, and, and we are incredibly excited. They opened last fall. And so we've asked them to come back and talk about from the pre-open perspective. You kind of heard some of that story. And then also what's been happening since they opened. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, how are they doing well? What would they do differently? Um, so we're very, very excited to have them with us, especially since they've been open such a short time. Um, and we're really excited to share their story with you. Absolutely. It's a uh, renaissance was actually awarded a uh, food corp startup of the year last year, uh, by FCI. We award that every year at the national, uh, CCMA co-op, which is the conference for all food co-ops nationally, not just startups. Um, and their story is, not only dynamic and, and exciting, but possibly a new path forward for urban co-ops. Um, so we're, we're really excited to get the update and grateful to them that they're gonna do two workshops for us. So we've covered all the workshops on Friday and Saturday. Um, now wait, there's Thursday too. <laughs> the, the conversation Okay, not sure what's happening here. I can hear you now. Do you hear okay. me? I can hear you now. All right. Okay. Awesome. But I didn't hear what you said. Oh, okay. So <laughs> what I said was, sorry, that was on my end, I guess. Um, the conference is Friday and Saturday. So what's this Thursday thing all about? Tell us about what happens on Thursday and how that works. Well, we, we couldn't be satisfied with offering you two days for worth of workshops. We thought we'd throw in a couple of three hour long workshops on Thursday. Um, two different topics, um, 
both giving you lots and lots of time with some experts, one of which is our very own Jacqueline Hanna, on two topics that are very important in the startup process. So the path to effective governance. So uh, Ben Sandell and Marilyn Scholl will be leading that workshop, walking you through lots of exercises um, about how to be a good board and how to effectively govern your co-op. And then I'm going to let Jacqueline talk about um, how she's going to talk to you about taking your co-op to market. Thank you, Deb. Um, actually, I'm going to take a minute to big up uh, the path to effective governance. I'm so excited about this one. Um, governance has never been the topic of one of the Thursday uh, intensive workshops before. Um, and Ben and Marilyn are really going to walk you through what is policy governance and how to govern effectively as a startup co-op from stage one when you're first organizing and, and appointing your first board um, through your first selections um, through you know and through your transition from a working co-op board to a governing co-op board once you have a general manager and we really looking at the last year of organizing where many of co-ops are are having problems, uh, you know, getting hamstringed is in this understanding the role of governance and making sure they stay on top of the governing work of being a co-op, not just the work of finding a location, getting it funded, getting to a thousand owners, which is all a ton of work. Um, this piece gets lost, and when and then eventually it can often trip up a co-op later on in the GM hiring process, um, many different ways. So I can't stress enough that you should go to their workshop and not mine, but. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not new to governance and feel like you've got that covered, um, or if you're bringing someone who's an outreach coordinator, um, is from your outreach or outreach um, or membership uh, committee, this one's for you. Um, this is uh, taking your cope to market is really, it's not full of too much material I haven't covered before. There'll be some new things, but it's really understanding your journey as a startup, as a marketing journey. Um, your brand, how you identify yourself, how you communicate, what wording you use, how ownership and how you present your co-op has to change through the stages. Um, we're really going to look at all of it. How do you pick your messages? The success of your startup food co-op often is made or broken on how well you market. And a lot of startups don't realize it's a marketing journey. So we're really going to talk about the journey of a co-op, uh, telling people and who they are and selling an idea because that's that's what you're doing until the days you, you open your stores. Uh, you're really selling a concept. Um, and selling a product and a concept can be very different. And so we're going to talk about that journey, what talents you need, what skills you need, what tools to use. Now, We've got one more thing happening on Thursday. Let's, let's take a look at that on our next slide. Tell, oh, I forgot. It seems like it, it's, it's actually one more slide forward. I'm going to ask you to jump one more forward, and we'll go back. I put them in the wrong order. <laughs> Also on Thursday, can you tell us about this, Deb? Yes, this is kind of um, an extra piece to that whole um, track on innovation. Um, we wanted to allow an opportunity for people who are organizing in urban low-income communities to come together in an extended format and really talk. I mean, really get down to the nitty-gritty and um, Jade is going to be leading this workshop, and it's not really a workshop, it's a conversation. Um, and it's what we hope to come out of this is for the participants to talk about the issues that they are facing. Are there gaps in the services that they're receiving that we in the development community are missing? Um, are there gaps in the funding community? Are there this is an opportunity to really get out on the table all those types of issues that groups organizing in urban low income com and low resourced communities are facing to get it all out there to help us as we are planning next year's conference and also to help the development community understand if there are specific issues that you're facing that, that are not being addressed so that we can come up with solutions and help you to address them. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, yeah, and, and Jade Barker from CDSCC will be facilitating this conversation. Um, and she's facilitating it specifically through something called open space technology, um, which will allow the groups to convene a variety of different mini sessions on different topics they want to collaborate on and problem solve on. Uh, and we're excited about the idea that the results from this work 
um, will be shared back to the development community, those consultants and co-op development centers and FCI um, that you rely on for building tools and, and helping build solutions um, and let them know what is working and what's not working. We're looking forward to that feedback. But this really specifically came from, again, this ongoing conversation that Deb, that you've been having um, that started two years ago when we had, when there was a, a excuse my language, I'm trying to think of the word, um, there was a, a forum on organizing in low-income urban communities. And then last year, many uh, several workshops were developed from that. And this is kind of the next evolution of what you've heard is needed um, from these organizers. We're excited. All right. We're going to go back a slide now. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So there are meet and greet events um, throughout Up and Coming. It's really about meeting your peers. You're going to be blown away by how much you learn from your peers. And you're going to tell us, because you do tell Deb every year, that you need more time to network. <laughs> so Deb got some more time to network in here. So what's going on this year? Well, remember we talked about those four things that you need to expect coming to the conference and fun was one of them and networking with your peers was another. So we've kind of killed two birds with one stone, so to speak. Um, on Thursday evening, um, we are um, having a reception at the Lakefront Brewery in Outpost. Um, our local food co-op host is also the host for this reception. Um, so there'll be some... Uh, light snacks as well as um, we'll get to taste some of Lakefront Brewery's product and then we'll have the ability to uh, tour the brewery itself. So that's really exciting. Um, and then on Friday we have our traditional Friday night reception that will be at the hotel. And once again you will have um, the opportunity to network with peers. Um, we actually have a guest speaker that we didn't put on the slide. I know. Um, we just found out this is confirmed. I can't believe I put it on here. I'm so excited. So who is our speaker? Um, Venus Williams. Um, she's from Milwaukee, and she is the director of Alice's Gardens. Um, she is very well respected in the Milwaukee community as well as nationally. Um, look her up um, on, the, on the web. Um, she is very excited to be with us and she'll talk a little bit on Friday night about what she's doing in Milwaukee and um, she is looking at starting a co-op and is bringing some of her fellow um, part of her organizing group with her to the conference so that's very very exciting um, and of course, this co this reception on Friday night, as well as Thursday night, is part of your registration. So there's no extra charge to have fun and network with your peers. And people always have an absolute blast. Um, super excited about hearing Venus to hear, hearing Venus speak. And it does end early enough for those of you who want to explore a little more of Milwaukee. Can get out and about. Just make sure that you're able to get up early the next morning because we got a lot for you to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So one thing um, that isn't on here, um, and, and I want to—I'll get to this in a minute—that um, we didn't think to throw in here. But there's on Saturday. There's a reason to stay to the ends. Put it that way. Um, we have uh, there's always uh, some awards or announcements at the end of the night um, and to the end of the day on Saturday. And one of the things that's new this year is we are doing some startup food co-op awards. Uh, at the conference. Can you give us any teasers about that, Deb? Oh, you would ask me. I don't have my I'm notes. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should have thrown the slide in. Um, there, there will be three awards, um, two of which will, and I won't tell you because I can't remember right now, uh, the title <laughs> of them, but two of them will be, um, be reviewed by experts and um, winners chosen. The third is going to be um, peer voted on. So the people who come to the conference will have an opportunity to vote on this particular award. Jacqueline, do you remember the title? I, um, it's the uh, Cooperative Citizen Award. There you go. Um, and this one is for you guys to vote on. Who of your fellow startup food co-ops has really in the last year deeply embodied principle six, the sixth principle, principle of cooperation, where co-ops support other co-ops? 
Uh, and there really are some of you who have been shining stars of offering your time, your energy, your documents, and uh, anything you can to support your fellow peer startups. And so we're really going to celebrate that because that spirit, that P6 spirit, does a, has done so much to grow the Startup Food Co-op community and lead to more and more Startup Food Co-ops being successful. So we're going to celebrate that. Okay. All right. I won't put you on the spot about the awards anymore. Just know awards are coming Saturday. Don't miss them. Um, and then we want to talk a little bit just thanking some sponsors. Um, we do offer attendee scholarships, um, and we did just get out the, the notices. Deb just got the notices about who was awarded those scholarships. And can you tell us a little bit? Uh, my understanding is that we had a record number of, of requests this year. Oh, absolutely. We had requests for over $78,000 from 40 plus co ops. And, and how much did we have to distribute? <laughs> Uh, $1,500, so a fraction of what was requested. So we were able to, we were not able to give a, to um, give scholarships to everyone that applied. Um, you would have had pennies, and that really wouldn't have done anybody any good. So what we ended up doing was we um, made 28 scholarship awards. Um, they were not big amounts of money, but hopefully that will help defray some of the travel cost or the registration if that's what the co-op decided to do. So these scholarships were made to the co-op this year instead of to an individual. And we have some wonderful sponsors of those scholarships. Um, Ralph K. Morris Foundation um, has been doing um, grants for scholarships for a number of years. In the last couple of years, they have granted money directly to ICDC for this initiative. And then we also have money from the Howard Bowers Fund um, of CDF and then Food Co-op Initiative also put some money into the pot for scholarships. So we had three three um, supporters of this initiative. Still, just a drop in the bucket to what's um, been requested, but we're hoping that the money that we were able to award will enable some folks to come that maybe perhaps otherwise would not have been able to come. Yeah, and, and I just want to mention that, um, and it's, we keep saying it was a drop in the bucket, it was, but Deb did work hard to expand the pool of money we could give out this year and did. It, it's actually up $5,000 this year, which is significant. Uh, she really, she increased the pool more than more than a third, 50% um, again, actually, um, than what we had last year, and we still just can't grant to everybody, but I, I just want to make clear that we're not resting on our laurels. Deb knows a lot of you could use the assistance, and it wasn't able to increase the assistance this year, but every year we get more requests that then balance out that increased assistance. Um, so if your co-op didn't win an award, some suggestions that we give startup food co-ops is check out, check with the mature food co-ops in your region. If you already have any kind of mental relationship uh, with a, a, men, a mentor co-op, a mature co-op in your region, they might be able to help. Uh, we have seen some people have attended um, with funds that were partially provided by a mature co-op in the region, so it's worth checking. You can always ask. Some have actually attended with city or municipal money. If the city knows you're working on building a food co-op, this is most common um, in food deserts, uh, whether urban or rural. We've seen both, um, but in areas where you're building a food co-op in a food desert, um, that cities or municipalities or counties are willing to uh, find $500 to help you out so you can attend this and learn more about how to open a new grocery store in their area. And then regional food system nonprofits. We've occasionally seen this too. If your state uh, has a, you know, a food system uh, organization, uh, a nonprofit, um, sometimes they didn't know about this conference and are pretty excited about it and are willing to give you some funds to go. So if you know of nonprofits that have a similar vision um, or you know or share some of your vision for your co-op like supporting local farms or or you know something of that nature uh, reach out to them just tell them this conference is happening and it would really mean a lot if you could send more people with their assistance sometimes it works so with that we're gonna jump to our next slide we're gonna real quickly share some tips about how to get the most out of your up-and-coming experience Deb what do you got for us well, um, we have heard once again, and we listen, that you really like the opportunity to spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time with the experts. So that means the CDS consultants, some of the um, financial folks that come to the conference. So we will have sign-up sheets available Friday morning 
first come first serve. Um, some of the consultants stay for the entire conference. Some just stay for one day. So if you're really interested in scheduling some time with Mel Braverman, you need to look at that sign up sheet. There are 30 minute slots and we ask that you only sign up for one um, so that we are able to help as many people as possible with this opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, don't wait till the last minute if there's somebody that you really want to spend some time with. And maybe um, it's a new relationship that you're trying to establish. So that's an opportunity as well. Perhaps one of the CDS consultants that you've not worked with before, but that you know is in your future. Um, now's the opportunity to get to meet them, um, talk to them about um, the expertise that they can lend to your project and really get to know them prior to um, hiring them on as um, a consultant for your project. So that's my advice is to sign up for those one -on ones as early as possible. And they do fill fast. And I just want to take a quick second for us to really thank CDSCC. Um, there will be some people who have signed up sheets there who are not CDSCC consultants, but most of them are. And this is your opportunity for 30 minutes of their time for free uh, to get to know them, to further a conversation you're already having. And it's, it's one of the ways that CDSCC really generously um, donates their time to make up and coming all it can be. And I just want to stress, um, sometimes it's invisible how much CDS does to support the startup community uh, and how much they donate to make that possible. So I just want to call that out and thank them for that. So quick tips from me. Don't go alone. If, if it's all humanly possible, send two or more people. I've heard again and again from startups who have sent one person that that person really regrets that no one else was there with them to bounce ideas, to go to multiple workshops and take back more knowledge, and also to bring the knowledge back together. When you have one person who comes back excited, y'all can learn a lot from them, but it gets a lot deeper when two, three, four, five members of your organizing committee have had this experience, have all this new knowledge, and can really help embed it into your organization. So if there's any way possible, bring more than one person from your startup. And the last one is, I'm your marketing person. You know, I got to say this, take photos. Show people you're doing the work. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very dynamic. Take photos of yourself. Have others take photos of you and get them out there, showing that there's a lot of people out there doing this work, that lots of people believe in startup food co-ops, and that you're working hard on getting it done. All right. Well, wow, we have filled a large chunk of an hour here um, <laughs> and I only got I've only got a couple of questions uh, and the first one actually cracks me up he said I feel like you've covered everything except for will the materials and slides be available afterwards yes um, we've tried all different ways to get the material to you we've made it we've made print copies we've tried using thumb drives but um, this year, what we've decided to do is we're going to set up a Dropbox that uh, will be available for you to uh, go online and take a look at all the materials electronically. That way, you don't have to worry about keeping up with anything. Um, it's easily accessible. Um, perhaps in the past, we've had people who maybe didn't get the thumb drive or they lost their notebook. Now it's going to be there. We'll give you um, access to that Dropbox, and uh, you'll be able to access all those materials. Okay. And this question does come up every year, so I'm actually going to extend that question and say, is that all going to be available um, to, to me if, I, if I'm unable to attend? Well, <laughs> um, I don't know about that. Uh, we have that question every year. Um, need to think about that a little bit. Well, and I'm going to just, I'm going to kind of help that out here and just say, I'm not going to put, I didn't mean to put her so on the spot, but this question comes up every year. And the challenge for us in offering up access to those materials without attending is that they're not in context. Um, you didn't experience the workshops. You didn't get to as experts we have to we have to admit it's a bit of a carrot we really want you to send someone from your co-op and then you have access to all of this material I mean just an immense amount of free material that has so much value that would have cost so much in any other way to get your hands on and and the reason we offer that carrot is because we know that startups that attend up and coming have such a better uh, such a better likelihood of opening and so I don't know what Deb's final decision is going to be. Sorry, I put you on the spot because this question is everybody. But I, um, I want to say 
we don't know for sure. And think of it as a carrot to join us to have access to all of that, as well as all your peers and all these experts. So any last thoughts you want to share with us, Deb? Hope we see you in Milwaukee. Um, we uh, are very, very excited to be in a new location. Um, it'll be new to you. It's new to us. We've had um, a terrific time planning this conference. We've still got some things to do. Um, and we'll have a brand new theme this year. Um, it won't be uh, Legos. It'll be something entirely different. So um, hope to see you there. And if you've got any questions in the meantime, um, you can go to the website at upandcoming.coop or you can give me a call. My number and my email are on the screen. I'll be happy to chat with you and answer any questions that you might have. Or you can also call Jacqueline. And you have to come find out what the theme is. Every year, this is such a blast. We had uh, we can do it, you know, Rosie the River. Uh, last year was Legos, we can build it. And uh, we got something new and fun this year. So you got to come see what we came up with and have your photo taken in our, our silly little photo booth. I mean, that's the most important part. <laughs> That'll be fun. I don't want to miss All right. I want to thank Deb uh, from the Indiana Cooperative Development Center um, just for founding, uh, for founding this, uh, this amazing event. It's better every year. She puts in so many tireless hours of work. Um, and for joining us today to make sure people feel like they're going to get everything um, out of the conference that is possible. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Jacqueline. Appreciate being here. All right. We're going to see you all in Milwaukee, March 10th and 11th. Absolutely. Have a great one. Bye.